Hello and welcome to another episode of Gay Side Stories, where the gay shit goes. I am your host, Trillificent. Thank you so much for joining me for another week. Remember, you guys can listen on Pippa, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Music and or Podcasts, YouTube, CastBox, Stitcher, Acast, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Spotify, or at GaySideStories.com slash shows. Also, remember to use the hashtags GaySidePod and Pods by QPOC when you're live tweeting or posting about the show. Send in your gay side mail to GaySideStories at gmail.com and I will read it on the show. So it can be asking for advice. You could want to just tell a story. You could want to talk about your coming out experience or maybe your transitioning experience. Whatever the case may be, those type of things I will feature on the show if you guys write in. So go ahead and do so. Lastly... I'm looking for some guests to come on to talk about alternate type relationships. So I'm talking about open relationships, poly relationships, things of that nature. So if you're interested, let me know. And now let's start the show. I am here with Eric of the Hung Up podcast. Eric, thank you for joining the show. Thank you for having me. So before we get into the usual segments, why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about your podcast? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, first, thank you for having me on. Um, my podcast is yes, Hung Up Podcast, H-U-N-G-U-P-P-O-D. Um, oh, C-A-S-T, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the hashtag. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I usually, we, and Pat, P. Ryan and I, we both um, refer to it as Hung Up Pod. But, um, hey, yeah. P. Ryan. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> um, Hung Up Pod, yes. Um, my dearly beloved. I actually came on board a little over a year ago, so I am not the first co-host. Um, I came on... And the show was going through some transition. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, about that around here. (laughs) 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 And I, you know, people would always tell me I've, you know, I have an education background. I've worked with a lot of people in counseling and love talking with people, love working with people. But people would always compliment my voice. And so I've always wanted to be on some type of radio or podcast show format um just never really had the opportunity to do it so um p ryan and i are very close we were friends first and you know we came together and we really just created this show it's like i like to think of it as like chicken chicken noodle soup for the soul mixed with a little pop culture (laughs) okay Um, so like ratchet noodle soup (laughs) It definitely can be at times, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> okay. But I, I really do, you know, I want to emphasize the chicken noodle soup part because we really, um, it's very personal for us at times. And a lot of the things that we go through as young um, black gay men who are professionals, who are in school, well, he's in school right now. Um, I finished school a few years ago but you know we we're we're really just bringing a lot of our experiences not all of them (laughs) but we're bringing a lot of our experiences to the show and and having some real um deep discussions okay cool 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 so when are you guys coming back (laughs) (laughs) we decided to take a little break and we should be back hopefully we'll have an episode for everyone on um, that first Sunday in September. Hey, that's very, very near. So I'm looking forward to that because, like you said, you do have a very nice voice. And I do like listening to you guys' show. I just I feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of a queer revolution and I'm really trying to consume more queer art and 
right now it's mostly podcasts. I want to see what my peers in the community have to say and what they have to talk about. So I do enjoy you guys' show, and I'm looking forward to you coming back. Thank you. I really appreciate that support. Seriously. No problem. So <laughs> now we're going to come and go. I'm going to come, sir. Oh, yeah. So this week, uh, I came across this article. And the title was Austria rejects gay Afghan for asylum on grounds he isn't gay enough. Yeah, you you heard that correctly. So (laughs) indeed, an official in the state of lower Austria wrote in rejecting the 18 year olds asylum claim. The way you walk, act or dress does not even in the slightest that you could be homosexual. Uh, f- I feel like there may have been some words left out of that statement, but basically what he's saying is you like, it was like the, the title said, you're not gay enough to claim gay. And, and who is making this declaration? It's an official from the state of lower Austria. So is it like the government? It's like, a, it's an immigrant official. Uh, So the young man from Afghan, he went to Austria as a minor and feared persecution for being gay if he returned to Afghanistan. The immigrant official invoked a variety of stereotypical assumptions about gay people in rejecting the team's claim, saying he saw, quote unquote, potential for aggression in the youth because he had fought with his housemates and contended this wouldn't be expected from a homosexual. Wow. Okay. Yeah. For the heteronormative, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so okay. to to put a little bit more on it, the official further questioned the young man's penchant for solitude, saying, "Quote: Aren't homosexuals rather social?" And also questioning the youth's claim of knowing he was gay at the age of twelve. Where he made some sort of comment like, isn't that too young to know? So imagine identifying as gay, being 18 years old from Afghanistan, and you go to a country seeking asylum because you fear for your life for being what you are in your home country. Just for them to say, oh, you're not gay enough. You don't switch when you walk. You don't have a purse fall out of your mouth when you speak basically is what they're saying so you you're not you're not a real gay you're too aggressive to be gay yeah because he fought he was he was aggressive so that's too manly i guess right too masculine too masculine right right right. so basically this official is like gay equals femininity and while there's nothing wrong with that that can be truthful to an extent maybe it's it's not the end all be all like gay men come in all shapes form and fashion so and I also have the right to really speak <laughs> my identity you know I have the right to do that as an individual right uh, so I really feel for this for this kid like wow so what do you know what happened like did they they turned him away and sent him back um the article didn't say exactly what happened to him but with this, I don't know if he's fighting it or what. So the article went on to say that Austria's interior ministry declined to comment on the specific case, saying it was not, quote, reflective of the wider reality, but that individual impressions play a major role in the consideration of asylum claims. The statement added that the ministry is seeking guidance from the United Nations Refugee Agency on how to better evaluate LGBTQ asylum applications. That's just so it's like you turn this kid away, but then you're saying, but we're going to go ask the United Nations what we should do in the future. It's like you could just be decent humans and use your common sense. Yeah. It's not rocket it science <laughs> and and do it now. Use this. Start with this case. That might, you know, that might be a good idea. No. I mean, I think it's like documentaries on Netflix where you can. I mean, like it's not. It's it's totally believable, you know, that 
this young man would fear for his life, you know, identifying as gay. And it was Afghanistan, right? Right. Yeah, they're not having that out there. Come on. And, you know, I've I've said this on this show multiple times and people kind of get a false sense of security, especially in America, that Uh, we (laughs) see gay people on TV. We see them in movies. So it's all good. But number one, even in America, we're still under threat of injury and death. But in other places in the world, it's still illegal. Yeah, like they'll kill you. They'll kill you. Your own government will hunt you down mm-hmm. for being LGBTQ. So it's absolutely incredible to for this young man to be going to Austria and being turned away. And what I yeah. thought was interesting in the yeah. statement is that they basically said it's up to the individual agent discretion and I'm like why wouldn't this be a case where you say maybe we should have someone else look at this that person clearly has some prejudices yeah but I didn't have more information because I didn't even see the young boy's name in the article so I was like I didn't even know what to look up oh they probably I would, I would, I would. but I would imagine that's for his safety I would hope yeah, exactly yeah so I'm hoping that either he's appealing this, the decision or was able to go somewhere else and find asylum or at least is able to lay low in his home country until he can figure out what to do. But I thought it was important to highlight this because, again, as a community and I'm semi speaking for myself, but I think there is some truth in it. We don't pay enough attention to our own news if it's not really shoved in our faces and I think it's also important for us to know what's going on in other parts of the world agreed so that's that on that and now we're going to shuffle on to the main topic so this week we're going to be discussing an article that I saw on pride.com that says 15 ways to tell if he's into you. <laughs> now, we've seen movies about this with a bunch of white people. How can we? It's always a big bone of contention. How do you know if he's into you? Is he texting back? Da, 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 da. So let's go through what they say are 15 ways to know if a guy is really into you. Cool. So number one. He texts you for no real reason other than to see how you're doing. Mm. Good morning. How have you been? What have you been up to? If he's texting you something like this just to check in, that means he's thinking about you. It means he has a little or not so little crush on you. So, Eric, are you the good morning texter or are you the recipient? (laughs) Uh, I would say both. Okay. I was, I would say both. I, um, you know, there, there are a few people that I speak to every day, um, sometimes a few times throughout the day. And, you know, those texts can be, you know, pretty consistent, you know, if not every day, every other day, you know, or every other morning, you know, getting that good morning text or I'm sending them out to a few, a few different people maybe with a few words of encouragement attached on the end. So is this platonic or is this romantic? Not this specific example, but I just mean in general. Like, are you both in both platonic and romantic situations or is it just mostly platonic? Um, I would say it's both. Okay. Balance in all things. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) I want to be completely honest and transparent. I feel like I'm usually the one that is doing the texting. Like you're not receiving them? Yeah, I don't I don't think I too often receive a good morning or how are you text like in a romantic context. Is that what you said? In any context. Gotcha. Like, I feel like with my friends, depending on what friend or group of friends, if it's a group chat, 
it's an ongoing chat, so we don't typically say good morning every morning. It's just we just start talking noise. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just start talking. Um and I've kind of gotten to a point where with a lot of my friends because I struggle with feeling like I'm a burden to my friends if I talk to them too much. <laughs> so, I've gotten and that's my own personal thing, but I mean, I'm I'm human, don't judge me. Okay, but I've gotten to the point <laughs> where I typically only will say something to the majority of my friends if I have something to say. And it could also be just from my advanced age where it's like, if I don't have anything to say, I'm not going to say anything, <laughs> you know. Now, every now and then I'll go through this wave and it's like if I haven't sp- spoken to some people, some friends or some acquaintances in a while, I'll send out texts to reach out and just say, hey, you know, how are you doing? Or I'll send something funny to initiate conversation. But overall, I feel like it's and it's not even in a bad way. Like, I don't feel bad about it all the time. I mean, again, I'm I'm human. So sometimes it gets to me. But overall, I'm like, eh, I mean, it is what it is, you know. That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I feel like my romantic life has been a perpetual series of he's not at all into you. It's not even just not that. It's like, like there's no level of him that's into you. But that's a different conversation for a different day. Mm. So number two, he's touchy. Sure, many gay men are touchy, but if he's overly touchy, then odds are he's into you. Think about the scene in, okay, I don't know what this uh, specific example is, but what do you say to this? If he's touchy, that means he's into you. Mm-hmm. Um, Go ahead. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, into you, how, I mean, it's different. I guess it's different levels to it. Um, some people can be touchy because they really like your skin or they, you know, they really do enjoy feeling the warmth of your body and being close to you and being near you is very intimate. Some people, you know, maybe just stay touchy because they want to (laughs) fuck. Agreed. I agree. I would say a guy that you're romantically interested in being touchy towards you is not at all an indication that he's into you because it could just be in that moment and whether he just wants to be touchy because some guys are touchy or whether he's just trying to get to the the milk and cookies <laughs> either way I don't think it's a a good way to gauge his overarching interest in you if that mm-hmm. makes sense it does you end up having an Issa Rae moment trying to be cute and you get shut down and you're like, Oh, well I thought you liked it. Nah, he liked it then. doesn't mean that he always, he always is going to like it or, you know, I agree with you hundred percent. VV spicy. (laughs) All right. Number three, when you touch him, his body reciprocates. This sounds like a song. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I need to put a melody to that give me a hit on SoundCloud okay <laughs> when you put your hand on his thigh he doesn't move his leg away he lets your hand stay there or he may even put his hand on your thigh or when you touch his back he doesn't recoil he leans into you if he's recoiling or doesn't seem comfortable with you touching him he's definitely not into you and you should cool it with all the touching So I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this is way off because it doesn't take into account people's differing feelings on being touched. There are some people that could love you to pieces and they do not want to be touched. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a good way to gauge that, especially also because it doesn't take into account environment. And I'll use myself as an example. So there was a guy that I was um, dot, dot, dot. I don't know how to define it. So dot, dot, dot. We'll do. A and situation. I was, sure. <laughs> and we were out with some of my friends and we were out in public 
and he was very touchy feely and I was kind of lukewarm to it not because I didn't want him touching me I enjoyed him touching me but the environment being out in public it, I was like eh. like why mm-hmm. you why you got to be holding my hand though like why you you know running your your hand up and down the back of my head like why you got to be doing all that like I I like it but the environment makes it different so that could easily be misconstrued going by this logic that I'm not into him because I feel I'm not comfortable enough just uncomfortable. Right. with being touched that way in public. So I think the environment and the individual need to be accounted for. It can't just be a blanket. Well, you know, you touch my thigh meat and I move <laughs> away. <laughs> That means you shouldn't have been touching my thigh meat. You know what I mean? But maybe that's just me. I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? I agree. And I think in order to, you know, gain that understanding of, you know, those boundaries of your partner or whoever you're with, like it just takes time. Um, you may not you may not gauge that immediately. Um, but I think it takes time to understand how what that person is into and you know, I can, I can understand that, like, when someone reciprocates or they, you know, they, they they show you that they appreciate what you just did versus someone just being like, no. Um, them being like, no, can be a lot of different reasons. So I, I really agree with, you know, where you're coming from with it. And I think, like I said, you just it just takes time. You got to get to know people. I think we are... Right now, it's very much, you know, people don't have a lot of boundaries. And what they probably end up wanting to do is touch you right away. <laughs> and, to establish you know, the boundaries versus establishing boundaries through conversation and maybe mm-hmm. nonverbal cues is straight to physicality in order to see where the boundaries are. I think I agree with what you're saying. I I, I understand. Yeah, gotta communicate. Oh man, we but would have so yeah. We <laughs> have so many fewer articles like this if we knew how to communicate with each other. So number four, he laughs at all your jokes. This sounds like straight out of the cis head playbook. Okay, funny. <laughs> <laughs> If you're spewing lame jokes nonstop and he's still laughing, either he has a terrible sense of humor or, more likely, he likes you. So anything you say, no matter how stupid it is, he'll still laugh at it. It's a serial killer. <laughs> I I'm would kidding. I would say <laughs> there's a sprinkle of truth in this. But it's a very thin line. Because we know that with gay men a lot of us do not suffer people that we don't like really on any capacity so if you're with someone and he's making a bunch of lame jokes I feel like a lot of us would be like let me go ahead and let me open my Uber app so I can get the fuck out of here (laughs) <laughs> versus if you actually like them you might sit there and be like oh you know that's you know, you you're making a joke about a meme on twitter from three days ago but that's funny because i like you you're cute or it could just be that they want to get in your pants i like i like a the first one that you said but i would eventually if they just kept going and going and going i'm just the type of person i'd be like look babe um <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> the real this in because i like you you know yeah. but you know you starting to look crazy out here yeah yeah that's when you have to hit him with the you know this ain't death comedy jam <laughs> thank right. you so much you have know, a seat you be like this ain't wild and out my name ain't nick cannon let's let's calm it down take it down a few notches right i agree now, if he's just making jokes, like you said, nonstop, or let me rephrase. If he is just laughing at everything, you literally everything you say is funny. Then you indeed might be in danger. Yeah, I don't like that. And you might want to evaluate your surroundings 
and plan your route of escape. There's something that gives me Joker vibes, and I don't like it. So a little bit, yeah, a little bit. And it, it just seems like I don't know. I'm just getting something from that that just makes me feel like you're laughing at everything. Are you really listening? Yeah, it's like either you're not listening. You're trying too hard, or I'm in the opening scenes of an investigation discovery story. So, yeah, first forty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Number five. I would not know. <laughs> he prefers FaceTiming over texting. Ugh. Right, the, I don't like that. The, <laughs> the ghetto. <laughs> it says if he wants to talk on the phone or FaceTime as opposed to text, then he is definitely interested. He wants to see that cute little face he's crushing on. Mm. Um, I feel like this is the same as the last one. There's a sprinkle of truth in here, but it's a thin line. And I'm not, I'm not really a phone person. Like, there are certain people I can talk on the phone with no problem. But mm. most instances, I don't like talking on the phone because you do have to give your undivided attention. And usually when I get on the phone with a friend, I know them well enough that I can still do other things. But if it's someone I don't know that well that I'm getting to know, I like texting because I'm still free to do other things. So I would agree to an extent if I'm willing to talk to you on the phone or FaceTime, then yeah, I probably do like you or at least I'm intrigued. Like is a strong word because it takes time and skill to, to wade through the trash. (laughs) Yeah. But (laughs) what say you? I like what you said and I'm going to couple that with, I like a little variety. So in the beginning, yeah, I, I need I need that versatility and that, you know, I can multitask while speaking to you. But I also realize that if I'm being intentional about how getting to know you, there has to come a time. And it's, you know, not necessarily in the beginning, but at some point, um, yeah, that's cool. Like, let's let's throw that in there where we do FaceTime sometimes. I I don't like how the question is phrased because it seems like the person would do that all the time versus yeah, texting. Like, I'm there's not with something that. wrong with texting because I feel like there's a uh, it can get a little stalkerish feeling when it's like constant yeah, FaceTime, like FaceTime, four. FaceTime. It's like, well. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, you want to see the person's face and you want to talk, especially if it's a distance thing. True. Good point. But I feel like there's balance in all things. Like if I if I feel like if I like you, we can text because that's my preferred method of communication. But if I pick up on the fact that you like to talk on the phone then I can make some concessions and we can find a balance of texting. And it may just be as simple. As, and again, this is what you said about communication. It may be as simple as me saying, hey, I'm doing X, Y, Z. Let's text. And then we can talk when I get done. Or something. Does that make sense? Yeah, and be understanding. Like, I don't like it when you say that, and then people are like, you, you, you know, don't complain. You know, don't be like, oh, well, you can't, you can't, I can't talk to you now. I don't like that type of stuff. Like, be mature, yeah. handle it in a mature way, communicate, and, you know, respect people's time. Yeah. When you just starting to get to know people, respect their time. Don't be blowing them up, texting them. You know, don't be blowing them up, calling them, like, chill. Like, just take your time, get to know people learn how they prefer to communicate. Um, I remember I met a guy who he just asked me right out, like, how do you prefer to communicate? Like, how do you, do you like to text? Do you prefer to text? Like, and that was very <laughs> cool of him. And I know, you know, everyone, you know, may not be, be down with that, but I think, you know, we just gotta take our time with these things. I agree. I also feel like 
this one might have triggered both of us a little. <laughs> I feel like we've come into situations where someone's like overly aggressive because that's the way it presents. He prefers FaceTiming over texting, and I think we both took it to the extreme mm-hmm. of someone beating you over the head with FaceTiming versus it just being a. <laughs> it's probably more of a I'll text you, but when we can, can we please talk on the phone or FaceTime? So, I think okay. I think we may mm-hmm. have uh, <laughs> we may have jumped to the extreme a little bit on that one. But hey, so just good. not. We're human. So number six, <laughs> he introduces you to his friends. Ugh. Okay, sure. The friend introduction is a big one. If he's not interested in more than something casual, he's not going to waste his time introducing you to his crew. You only introduce a man to your crew if you want to get your friend's opinion and approval of the man you like. I don't know why a part of me just feels like that's really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Extreme? That's taking it to the next level. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's like, what's next? The parents? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, It presents itself as if you're introducing someone you don't know very well to your friends. And I don't know about that, but I'm almost to the point where it's like, like casually. yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. Out at the bar, out at, you know, you see each other out with, you know, you may run into some friends out in the, you know, out on the street and you just so happen to be with people. Like I could see casually introducing me um, because, you know, we, just so happen to be in a situation where that would be appropriate. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like when you when you start to introduce to that inner circle, um, I don't know. I feel like that could be a sign that he's into you. Because that, uh, to me, that's like you want them to be involved in your life and in your space. Yeah. I feel like maybe I've been on Twitter too much because when I read this, my immediate and thought I'm, was... <laughs> I'm introdu- people are introducing someone that they met to their friends to make sure like nobody in the crew smashed. <laughs> or they probably not... did that ready with a screenshot. <laughs> if you're smart, listen, listen, listen. Because I've had instances <laughs> where it's like, you who are you date? Who is it? Send me a picture. What's his name? What's his social security? No, no. <laughs> But definitely, what's his name? And send me a picture just to make sure I don't have any tea that you don't know about. Um, A friend of mine, well, a former friend of mine, I remember we went to um, we went to the club one year, which I am not a club person at all. And there was this guy that I knew that I had hooked up with in the past, and we like went home. That was what, like New Year's Eve. So fast forward a couple years. And my friend, my former friend texts me and he's like, oh, I've been talking to this dude for a couple of weeks. I like him so much. He was probably one of these earlier things. I like FaceTiming him oh. instead of texting him. And I was like, oh, OK, what's his name? Send me a picture. He sends me. Oh. He, he tells me his name and immediately my my antenna are up and I'm like, mm, send me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> just to confirm yeah. what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. And he sends me the picture and I'm like, oh, um, just so you know, remember that year we went to the club for New Year's? And remember when I left with that guy? That was yeah. him. And we definitely went home and smashed. Got him. He was like, well, <laughs> that's canceled. <laughs> oh, so that was a deal breaker for him. Yeah. It was, it okay. was. I, I didn't, expect- I didn't expect it not to be, which is why I went ahead and told him. Plus, I think that's, I don't think that's something that I needed to. I was fine with it either way. I was like, if you want to continue talking to him, please go right ahead. There were some other layers to that, but we don't need to get into that <laughs> because I don't. I think there was some incompatibility there, but <laughs> so- we don't need to get. We don't need to go into that. Mm-hmm. Number seven. Oh, well, you were right. <laughs> he introduces you to his parents and family. <laughs> oh, see, uh-uh. 
Mm-mm. I'm assuming that this is not just in the courtship phase. Like this must be spanning like an actual relationship. Well, yeah. So you're in a relationship with someone, but you're feeling like I don't know if this guy is into me. I don't know if some of this stuff is the way to go about figuring it out. Like, let's say uh, you and I are in a relationship. Let's, <laughs> let's say you and I are in a relationship and I'm feeling insecure about whether or not you really like me and you really are in this relationship for me. And so mm-hmm. in order to figure that out, I'm like, well, I'm going to introduce him to my mama. Right. To that figure it out. That BuzzFeed news quiz, like, come on, right? A buzz, a buzz. What is it? The buzz. What is the app? <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like this is again, like we were saying before, this is extreme. I feel like maybe sit down and have a conversation and express your insecurities about the. I I don't know if bringing your friends and your family and your parents <laughs> into it is the best way to determine. I mean, I think some people like if depending maybe depending on the relationship you have with like your parents or your mama you know maybe you want someone to observe and they can be like yeah that boy don't like you don't waste your time but i don't know it wouldn't be on my list of things to do well it's good that we're talking all this stuff out listen all the people who read this article need to listen to your show So you can get the real scoop on this stuff because it's a little uh, it's a little off, but it, it does make for a cute conversation. <laughs> I don't know. I just it could just be me, but I'm I'm in my mind. I'm thinking if I'm dating a guy, I'm in a relationship with a guy. If I'm me- introducing him to my family and friends, it's not to get opinions and it's not to test whether or not he really likes me. It's I'm secure, and confident play. in this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to meet these people because these are important people in my life and by extension important people in your life. If this to me feels like game playing, like well, I don't know, like he be putting it down in the bedroom, but then when I be texting him good morning at nine, I don't get a reply till one, so I don't know if I really like him. So we're gonna go to Olive Garden and meet my mama. Like that just mm, Something in the milk ain't clean. And you know what? And I'm also looking at the other side of it. Like, you know, I would not want to date a guy who would not respect his parents enough to only introduce to and that he really wanted his parents to meet. Like, to me, that also speaks about their relationship. Yeah. And if we just met and started talking two days ago, and you want to introduce me to your parents, like, I'm a little nervous. Like, I feel like, all right, well, how many niggas you didn't introduce to your parents? Like, how many times have you done this? Because you're doing it real quick with me. Right. And then I feel like then you start entering into sitcom territory. It's like you go meet the mama and the mama's like, oh, I don't know. I like Darius better than this one. I mean, right. he a right. little scrawny. I feel yeah, like you. you yeah. yeah. You like will read you you'll end up getting your feelings hurt messing around with this dude right and then he really ain't gonna be into you because he gonna block you <laughs> or ghost that ass same difference same thing you're right yep okay number eight he wants to stay the night or invite you to um yeah mm, uh, mm. come on now we did that. Come on, we should have been done. What were we waiting for? Okay, yeah. I, I was okay. I, I feel the same way. I don't, I don't know about this. But anyway, it says if he doesn't want to stay the night or doesn't invite you to, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not into you. Some people prefer sleeping alone, i.e., me, or they work early in the morning. Again, me. True. There are a number of valid reasons why he might not want to spend the night. (laughs) Nevertheless, if he does insist you stay the night, then he is interested for sure. And I feel like that whole explanation contradicted itself. (laughs) Right. It's like, it doesn't mean that he's not, but if he does, then it means that he definitely is. I don't know if any of that is true. Because listen, I... Those reasons might be... Yeah, I 
like to sleep alone. I'm very used to it. And so, and my other thing is I'm kind of a light sleeper. And in a lot of instances where I've had a guy like spend the night, he snores. Annoying as hell. Mm-hmm. He snores. And, and he, you right. They fall asleep before me. And then and now it's a freight train in my bedroom and I can't sleep. <laughs> He's snoring like that. You put that thing thing down. I hear, I hear what you're saying. That I is got... not where I was going with that. <laughs> that's not what I meant. I mean, I'm not going to say that's not true, but that's also not what I meant. I'm just saying they mm-hmm. fall asleep before me. And so when they start snoring, I can't sleep. Like I had an instance where a guy was snoring so bad. <laughs> And I was like, well, I, I need to go sleep on the couch. I can't sleep. Because yeah, he was is. already, you know. And I, this is one of those things where someone will probably hear that and be like, uh-uh, not in my bed. I would have got some water and threw it on them. That's extreme. I don't want to do all that. I don't, you don't play with people in their sleep. Because if they get up swinging, then everybody going to be upset. Yeah, I've I've heard people talk about, you know, Putting people out, like not having any problem with like telling people, okay, we done, we're done, good night. <laughs> well, and so in these instances, it was someone that I had a connection with. It wasn't like just like if it's a hookup, how does the song go? When it's all over, please get up and leave. <laughs> Thank you so much. I remember, oh my God, I remember. <laughs> And I think I, I wasn't solidified in this when I, I was hooking up with this guy. And it was just all bad. Well, I mean, not all bad. But after bad. And so, <laughs> and so we do, the, we do the, the deed and he starts talking. And it's one of those instances where it's like, it was all good until you started bumping your gums. And now you're saying things that I can't agree with. And now I want you out of my house. (laughs) And he was not the type to take a hint because he was like, you know, I came to your crib and you like three minutes from my job. So I'm a crash here. And I'm like, how did you just make your mind up about that, sir? Right. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, but we just we just smashing like you're not even my nigga. You're not even on the track to be my nigga. And after the shit that you were saying, you damn sure not. Because he was one of those, like, one of those internalized homophobia types. Like, I don't understand why a gay gotta go around dressed like a woman if you're a man. And I was like, ugh, gross. I can't believe that I did sexual things with that. Yeah, you stupid. Although yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> so... I say all that to say, I don't know if this is a good indication. However, I think in the long run, if you never spend the night at each other's house, like ever, there might be an issue. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, because I, go ahead. I wasn't trying to shame the people in the beginning with my comment. I wasn't trying to shame the people who want to hold off because I respect that. I actually, in the end, I've experienced that, like, holding off and not having sex right away can be, it could it could be a much better experience, especially if you're really trying to get to know that person. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I feel like if he never spends the night or never spend, or you never spend the night at his place, he never invites you over. You might be entering six brown chicks slash the listener letter from the read territory. So, but if it's a, if he doesn't spend the night every time y'all see each other, there's there. I don't think that's an issue. Like you gotta be able to use your discernment on that one. So number nine says he makes intense eye contact when you're hanging out. Have you ever had dinner with a guy and the whole time he's looking you in the eyes? You're always the one who has to break the eye contact. The guy was definitely interested in you. 
Um, uh, uh, sure, Jan. Mm-hmm. Yep. I agree. However, I I would say the caveat to this is depending on the nature of your acquaintance with the person, his interests could be varied. It could be he's madly in love with you or it could be that he is just very, very anxious to take you to pound town. True that to go either way. Yeah, yeah, it just depends on what your relationship is like. So number 10 says he asks if you're seeing anyone. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Any questions about who else you're dating or having sex with is a telltale sign that he's interested. I don't think that's how that works, but okay. He wants to see if you are willing to be or already are committed to him and only him. Mm. I wow. don't I don't agree with this because I feel like this can be interpreted as either it could be that they're just trying to protect themselves or it also could be that there's some jealousy or it could be that they are in one of these positions and so they're trying to catch you in some dirt so that you don't catch them in some dirt. But I, I, I just can't him asking, are you dating anyone else or having sex with anyone? I feel like that's just like a run of the mill question. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't really like it. I, well, in the beginning, I, 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 me personally, I think there comes a time where you ask that. Right. I feel like if you're on the path to, something more substantial than just dating then yeah it makes sense but even then it would be in the throes of communication it wouldn't just be kind of out of the blue or rather I Mm -hmm. I would say you shouldn't be sitting back waiting for him to ask you this question to ascertain whether or not he's into you or if maybe you're not waiting, but the conversation comes up and you say, Oh, this is my confirmation that he's really into me because let me tell y'all something. Listen closely, friends, men are trash. Okay. And they will ask you these questions and be 100% serious while they still have a whole quote unquote situation of their own. A lot of times a man being in a relationship outside of you is not going to stop him from wanting you to be faithful in that relationship. So, again, discernment. Know what you're getting into, because just because he's asking you these questions, that don't mean that he don't have a boyfriend at home or a wife and kids. Nothing is always what it seems. And like you said, same thing with these questions. Don't take it for face value. Yeah. I wouldn't take it at face value. Like, again, if it conversation in the natural course of your acquaintance, yes. But neither party should be using that as a benchmark of whether or not I really like you. It should be a, I want, I really want to be with you. Maybe. I really like you. You should be way past that point if you're asking this question or being asked this question, in my yeah. opinion. So number 11 says he initiates the hangout sessions. Ooh, this is ooh. If he's always the one asking to hang out, then he definitely likes you. That's just clear as day. Uh, is it? If he's always initiating the hangout, he 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 definitely likes you. If he's always initiating the hangout sessions, then maybe you trash. Yeah, it's like, what do you do? Do you care? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay, I took this he's a whole different way. Because I'm like, it's like, he's like, damn, this the point, begging for your attention. And you're like, like, hopefully you're not sitting back and letting him always be the one initiating the hangout sessions. Now, it could be a little quote unquote cute situation where he is kind of beating you to the punch. Okay. But if you just sitting back like, 
if this nigga don't text me, then we ain't hanging out and all that's trash. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm not into that. Yeah, don't do that. That's not good. I won't be into you if you do that. (laughs) (laughs) That's the quickest way for me to be not into you. Yeah. I like a little spontaneity and, you know, but I also like us to, you know, if we're, you know, being intentional about dating, that we plan shit too. And not only plan shit, but we follow through, you know, with our commitments. And, you know, if things change, like I said before, be respectful of the person's time and make sure you communicate. Ooh, communication is so, 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 so important. Number 12, he wants to know everything about you. Mm. If he's asking question after question, nonstop run. No. <laughs> right. Like, it's annoying. Wanting to know about your childhood, your family, your college years, and so on, then he's interested. He wants to know you before he knows you. Know what I mean? I think there's some truth here because there does have to be a certain level of interest for someone to want to know about you beyond the surface, beyond what do you watch on TV and what do you like to eat? I think that that is, or rather it can be, an indication of a deeper connection or at least mm-hmm. the desire for one. But, and this is not to be funny because we live in the, in the year of our Lord, 2018 discernment. Cause he also could just be trying to scam you. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't like how you have question. to be. Yeah. You have to be careful with like, if it's over the mm-hmm. course of time, if it's organic, yes. But if it's That's like a saying. a yeah. rush to try to get as much information about you as possible, that she's trying to put a stunt on you. Yeah, yeah. That it's likely. I mean, <laughs> and be careful. I, I agree with you though, and I think where a person goes with this and how deep they go uh, really speaks to how they plan to engage you. Right. And I really like how you put it because you you, you got to do this over time. Like, it has to be organic. We have to have experiences together that allow you to get to know everything about me. Don't just yeah. ask questions. Like, that's crazy. Or even if it is through questions, it can't be in one setting or overnight. Right. Like, you're not going to right. get right. to know someone right. overnight. Or even in the course of a week, like it takes time and you have to take your time in order to truly get to know someone. And so to me, if a person is willing to take their time and get to know me and really fashion a way to understand the nuances of my personality and my likes and my dislikes and whatnot, then to me, that's a sign that he is interested. But if it's just a quick, fast succession of rapid fire questions that I feel like that's more so like a playbook type of thing than genuine interest. Mm -hmm. So number 13 says your dates are more than Netflix and chill. I'm so tired of that term. But anyway, (laughs) if you're going out to parties together, if you're seeing drag shows, if you and he paint the town red, then he likes you for reals. Well, I don't know if that's true. Because it it could be a situation where it's like, does he like you or does he like having someone to do stuff with? Yeah, because sometimes people, that's, oh God, that's really true. Because sometimes people don't like you, they like the idea of you. Or they like certain things about you and not necessarily the person. I mean, that that's true, but it, you could even dial it back a level and just be like, I don't have friends that I can do things with, so here you are and I'm quote unquote dating you because I have someone to do things that I like to do and it doesn't have anything to do with you. You could be anybody and it's about me and doing the things that I want to do. So I don't think doing things together necessarily means he's into you. Like it takes a lot of different things to know, but if, if it's a thoughtful type of interaction, like if he's planning thoughtful dates and it's not just let's go to Chili's and get some baby back baby backs or something <laughs> of that nature like if he puts time and 
and plan something, then I could see that being an indication to, to say, huh, maybe he kind of does like me in a way versus, okay, we only sitting at home watching Netflix. He don't, because listen, it's a lot of couples. It's a lot of people that get with someone and they become homebodies and that's what they do. You know, Maybe that's what they're looking for. Right. Some people. And it's like, you can't really judge it as if we never go out and do anything, then that means he don't like you because he might like you just fine. He might like easy access and you might like it too. Giddy up. Just saying. Going out and quote unquote painting the town red, that doesn't necessarily, I mean, maybe he just likes you because he likes to be seen with you. And again, it may not have anything to do with you. There's a lot of levels to this. We're almost done, kids. Number 14. <laughs> he invites you on a trip. Ooh. Mm. Mm. That's kind of... Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all out here going on trips with these niggas? Ooh, can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> Want to get away for the weekend? It's like the most obvious sign that he likes you. If he says, let's go to some cabin in the woods, I say, hell no. No, sorry. <laughs> Bring some condoms, girls, because once that fire gets going, you won't be leaving that cabin. This is very Caucasian. <laughs> I don't. Mm. I like the oh. the. I like the thought. Uh, you know, I don't know who's paying for this. <laughs> that, well, that's a really good question. Okay, let's say he's paying. You going? You down or no? So my indication of whether or not he really likes me would be. What is he taking me to do? Is it something that he's ascertained over the course of our courtship, friendship, relationship, whatever, that he knows I'll like? Is he taking me something that so I can have a new experience or is it something janky? (laughs) Janky. Because I think the theme for me and I think a little bit for you, too, is intention. The intention matters. Like the actions are one thing, the words are one thing, but the intention behind all of it is what really matters. Yeah. How you, how do you make me feel? My thing is like, is it deliberate? Like, are you deliberately putting thought and feeling into the things that you're presenting to me? If you say, let's go on a trip, is it something that you've really put some because, thought into? Right. Because you want to spend time with me. Because you want to spend time with me. Like, is it, or is it something where it's like, oh, well, um, let's go out of town, babe. And you'd be like, oh, okay, let's go. And you'd be like, all right, we're going to go to Atlanta. Okay. It's pride this, this weekend. What? Oh, shit. You know? (laughs) Then got you caught up. Versus, you know, depending on who you mess with, it'd be like, oh, we're going to LA this weekend. Make sure you pack some nice stuff. And then you end up on the red carpet somewhere. Like intention matters. Like where are we going? Where are we going? And how much of it is for us? And with that being said, I'll just say that um, I really just like the idea of traveling. And I think a lot of people should do as much as they can. I mean, not everybody's not able. You oh, know yeah, I, mean? I definitely agree. And, you know, but if you are meeting someone and you guys are spending time together, try to get out and try to just, you know, have different experiences outside of Netflix and chill. Trust and believe we're going to have some Netflix and chill. (sighs) But outside of that, um, I think it's important that we we do things. I I like being outside. So a nigga can take me anything to the outside and I'm good. And you better not ask me or challenge me on the tennis court because that's exactly where I'm going to meet you. Come on, tennis. (laughs) I can't I like say the like same that. thing because it is way too hot where I live. I feel right. like if you like, let's go outside and do X, Y, Z, I'd be like, you trying to kill me. I know you don't fuck with me. Do you, you understand how hot it, it is outside? <laughs> but just bring a lot of water. You'll be all right. Oh, so you 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 are trying to kill me. How you going to come in my show? <laughs> 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 okay, last one. Number 15. He says how much he enjoys hanging out with you. Unless you have a reason not to take him at face value, you should do so. If he says, hey, I had a lot of fun meeting you. We should do something else sometime. Then he probably is into you. 
friends don't say they had a fun time and would like to do it again sometime. Friends just have fun times and obviously want to hang out again. Nothing needs to be said. Uh, I think there's some truth in this. Mm-hmm. I think I think there's some truth in this. Given the parameters that are laid out here, if it's like an initial meeting or something, like if y'all go to the Starbucks and like get me like a strawberry frappe and you talk and you enjoy each other and it's like, okay, let's let's do X, Y, Z. Let's go to dinner. Let's go bowling. Let's go indoor skydiving or so. I don't know. Then I would say it's a fair to say he is into you. If you meet up for an initial meeting and it's like, okay, it was great meeting you. And then you don't ever hear from him again. You know, I, I can see that. I wouldn't hinge on it, but I can see it. If that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. I I feel like reflection is another sign of being intentional. I think we, oftentimes we assume people know how we feel. Mm-hmm. People don't always know how we feel. And I think, I mean, I'm just, the t- I'm just that guy. Like I would, go forth and tell someone like listen this is how you're making me feel i'm enjoying being around you i'm enjoying having conversations with you because they're helping me get through you know a situation i'm dealing with at work like whatever i think we should share more about how we feel with people and i think this number 15 the last one i think it was a good way to kind of top it all off um and and, you know we've like you said the theme has been intent being intentional um, and I think the other theme has been communicate um, with this conversation. So, yeah. yeah. And people- in all things, communication is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So let's switch gears so we can get out of here and let's go through the queer query. My favorite segment. Question. First question. What's a go to comfort meal you enjoy? Ooh, I would say I love salmon, like baked salmon, fresh and like hot. And I love um, sweet, like baked sweet potatoes Mm -hmm. and maybe some asparagus. That's probably like my favorite thing to cook myself. I also cook for other people. I really I really like that. But for me, I, I will sit and I will eat and eat and eat and it feels good and it tastes good and it's healthy and I don't feel like shit afterwards and I don't, I don't feel bad. I like Brussels sprouts too and you can you can do a lot with those. <laughs> okay. Season them up, all different types of toppings. Mm-hmm. That's another comfort meal. That's interesting. I don't think most people's first thought would be healthy meals when they think comfort, it comfort food. <laughs> I don't eat a lot of like, but well, that's not true. I do a little bit. Not a lot, though. Listen, all I know is whoever pizza. No, that's not comfort. No, I mean it can be. It depends on what's comfort to you, I suppose. What's comforting to you? All I know is whoever I end up with, he gonna have to like to cook because that is not my ministry. I hate it. <laughs> I despise it. Don't ask me to cook nothing. <laughs> Very therapeutic. Not for me. Um, a go to <laughs> comfort meal for me, probably mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. But like good mac and cheese. Like yeah. if I consider it a comfort, <laughs> it needs to be baked mac and cheese with real cheese and uh, however you make it. I'm trying to think of how my mom makes it. I think she puts like condensed milk and all kinds of stuff in there. Or like if you do Chef Risha's mac and cheese recipe. I did that once. Now, I don't like cooking, but every now and then I get inspired. Some. <laughs> and so one year um, when I, I mean, I'm, I was doing Thanksgiving by myself and I was like, you know what? I deserve. I'm not going to sit here and eat chicken nuggets. So I went to the store and I got the ingredients and I made it and it was VV good. I had a whole pan of mac and cheese to myself. I was in here living. Okay. And I was like, I did that with my non cooking ass. She. So yeah, that sounds good. You got me thinking about, um, shout out to my co-host P Ryan. He made a crazy mac and cheese. Um, 
for one of my um I had a little house party. You got me thinking about it. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you do it right, it can be really good and it lasts. So you can just keep going back to it for like three days, oh, just yes. scooping out oh, yes. mac and cheese and warming it back up and just mm. Mm-hmm. Now we're not gonna talk about the mac and cheese and sweet potato combination because that's just indulgent. You know we like that. You know that's what we like. Uh, sweet and salt. Mm, sweet and salty. We like to get that. Yeah, we like to get that with our fried chicken platters. Eh, it depends. It could. I mean, hell, to be honest, I really don't even Within. need a meat. Although there is this spot that I order from on Uber Eats, and I get like the oxtail with gravy and rice, and then I get mac and cheese and sweet potatoes and a uh, the combo uh, it's got to be like 7,000 calories but I'd be like don't care <laughs> don't care I'm eating it all in one setting don't care it's way too much food it's probably enough food for three settings don't care mac and cheese and yams at the same time at the same damn time okay next question it's actually going to be rapid fire so I'm going to say a word and you say the first thing that comes to mind without thinking about it Okay. All right. All right. You ready? Yep. <laughs> Life. Camera. Deal. Or no deal. Cash. Money. Single. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last one. Sky. Hi. Okay, not unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, that I I was not expecting that. Come on, honest and real reaction, authenticity. Yeah, I like yeah. it. It's all good though. Okay, so to wrap up the queer query, I'm actually going to throw it to you and let you ask a question. Yeah, so I have a question for you. Okay, I feel like I was listening to. I hope I got this right. <laughs> I feel like I was listening to your very your most recent episode and you were you know talking about um I can't remember exactly how you phrased it but it was about the end like as far as your your show goes um is there an end what does that end look like um and I wanted to ask you especially because you just created and congratulations on creating your hashtag Thank you. Uh, QPLC right Pods by QPLC. Pods by QPLC. Got mm-hmm. it. Congratulations on that. With with that coming along, I just wanted to ask you where where do you see yourself? And just from gauging your conversation, because you really kind of triggered me to think about some things um, in that conversation. So I, you know, since I'm here with you, I, I figured I would ask you where, where do you see yourself. So I'm going to be completely transparent. And this is a very good question, by the way. Thank you. I think about it, but I don't allow myself to think about it, if that makes sense. Like it's in the back of my mind all the time. And it's something that I've worried about. Like I said on that episode, something that I worried about since I started this show, like, am I going to have material that's going to be able to sustain the show? And it's always been something that just has been an, I don't want to say a fear, but excuse me. It's been something that I've been very aware of. Um, and I, I feel like there's a level of fear when it comes to my podcast. And that level of fear does not allow me or has not allowed me to this point to really sit down and like map out goals of what I want to do and what I want to accomplish with this show. Um, and I just tweeted this uh, last night. I was listening to the John effect and I don't even, I don't even think it was anything specific that he said, but there was something about in that show that made me think about why am I doing this? And so I've been taking some steps back and kind of reevaluating, like, am I doing this because I have a specific goal or am I doing it because I enjoy it? And I think I was getting to a point where I was so focused on just trying to do it that I was getting to the point where I wasn't enjoying it. And that was why I ended up taking that break. Like I was just a little drained. 
and it wasn't in a way where it's like I'm drained because I'm feeling fulfilled. It was I'm, I'm drained because I'm trying to crank out content because I'm just trying to keep the ship afloat. Right. And so that thought has made me feel like what is the shelf life of the show? And right now, what I, where I'm operating is as long as I feel like I have work to do and I have conversations that I want to have, not even necessarily that quote unquote need to be had, but that I want to have, as long as there's people out there that I want to bring on the show, then I'm going to keep going. And I've over the break, I've been thinking of ways to retool it so that it can be a little bit more sustainable than the way I was running it before. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. If that answers your question. It did. Thank you. Yes. That was very, um, thank you for being transparent. Uh, You know, that's what we do around here. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy. It ain't easy. No, it's not. So, thank you so much for that. And that is going to wrap up the queer query eric again thank you so 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 much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to come on this little rinky dink show and introduce the world to your very nice speaking voice (laughs) you were awesome i really enjoyed this it was just a great i just felt like we were on the phone just talking you know like this was such a great conversation i really enjoy your show i will continue to listen congratulations on everything Uh, thank you i try i try to make it where it just feels not even that it feels but that it is organic like if if it's coming across where we're not having an authentic conversation then i'm i didn't do it right so tell people one more time where they can find you or tell them for the first time tell people where they can find you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Instagram at E Dante Cole. That's E D A N T E C O L E, all one word. And you can also find my podcast on Instagram and SoundCloud, Apple, Stitcher, Hunger Podcasts. So I will have those links in the show notes. And you definitely want to follow him on Instagram because he is not bad on the eyes at all. You are all <laughs> welcome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to wrap up this episode of Gay Side Stories, you guys. Remember, go to GaySideStories.com. That is the hub for all things Gay Side Stories. Take a minute and go over to your Apple Podcasts app or whatever app that you use that allows you to leave ratings and reviews and leave a five star rating. I really would appreciate it. It helps so much. You guys have no idea. Or maybe you do. I'm sure every podcast you listen to says the same thing and we say it because it is important. So if you feel inclined, please go over and do that for me. Also, remember, you guys can find me every week on ratchet ramblings over on the cspn with my friends jeremy and candace discussing black reality tv shows such as black ink crew chicago and love and hip-hop hollywood so if you are into those types of things find me over there we have a good time it is a comedy podcast we talk a lot of trash but it's all in good fun And as always, love yourself and whether you're a top, bottom, verse or whatever you identify as, protect your walls. And I'm out. I'll see you guys next week.